Hello everybody, welcome back to Destination Unknown, where the only thing certain is uncertainty. I'm Blake Connor here with my friend Josh Elliott, and this is episode four. How's it going, Josh? Mm. Four episodes in, and we're still going. I Thank know you guys it's crazy. For watching. Thank you for your feedback. Uh, for some reason, you guys enjoy this thing, so we're gonna continue doing it. Absolutely, and if you don't enjoy it, well, you know what? We're gonna keep doing it, also. So exactly, because we enjoy <laughs> it. But, uh, mm. dude, so um, I will say right off the bat, I did not have time to listen to any of the music because breaking the fourth wall. We're recording this the next day. After but, the last um, podcast. After after the last podcast. You are seeing them a week apart. We are recording them a day apart. So I haven't yet listened to the music. I will tell um, you, I have listened to the music. And let me tell you, okay. you guys had yeah, you guys had some good suggestions. The last podcast, uh, you suggested uh, The Human Condition by John Bellion. Um, yep. Ty suggested I'm With You by the Red Hot Chili Peppers. And I listened to both of those albums today because I had significantly less going on than you do. Um, <laughs> and yeah. I really, really enjoyed, uh, let's see, I, I wrote some things down. Um, well, there were the songs Maybe, I Don't Know, uh, Way to the World, uh, 80s Films, and then, of course, uh, Woke the Fuck Up from John Bellion. I, I really enjoy those. Um, as far as Red Hot Chili Peppers go from Ty's album, really love the song Look Around. Uh, yes. I'm a big fan of both Great of those song. albums so Great far. Um, even if it's even if it's for next week, man, I don't even care. You need to listen to that Judas Priest album because oh, I, I will. I will oh, for it's, sure. I I can't stress enough how much I really dig their sound. It's so cool. Yeah. They've been making music since 1976. Uh, they opened with the um, album Rockarola, and that was 1976. They released their most recent album March this year. These men are. Cool. Oh, let me let me mute my phone there. Um, yeah, I don't know. Uh, Rob Halford and the boys, they're, they're some gods. You know that they're pretty cool. Yeah. Um, yeah. So I, uh, I've heard the chili peppers album plenty of times. Um, like, so I'm familiar with it and I love it. I think it's awesome. Okay. Um, but yeah, I will check out, uh, uh, the, the album that you suggested, the Judas Priest album. And mm. I will let you know when I think probably not oh, on the podcast, course. but just, uh, just in, just in we'll person. comment below, yeah. But um, <laughs> yeah. So this week, um, well, this week I say this week, even though we were we're recording this the next day. But um, <laughs> um, so last night something happened. Mm. Dude, Elaborate. Something happened last night. So, have you ever lucid dreamed? I have, yes, I have lucid dreamed. Okay, well, I have not until oh. last night. <laughs> that's big news, buddy. Yeah, so it's kind of it's kind of unfortunate because it's not a very cool dream mm. because I realized that I was dreaming, and then I woke up almost immediately. Yeah, like I was in control for like two seconds, and then I woke up. Yeah, and I just woke up like, just sad because I was like, "Oh my <laughs> gosh, I'm never gonna have this chance again." Yeah, but, dang, yeah, I was so <clears throat> close. So you say you have done it before? Yeah, yeah. No, mine, my lucid dream was not. Um, I lucid dreamed probably two years ago now. It's been a while, uh, and I remember it happened. Like I didn't even realize that it had happened. Like um, what was happening is basically like. Um, it was it's so ridiculous the thing that set me off is so absurd i was uh like in the dream i was at mcdonald's and i went okay. and i ordered i went and i ordered a mcdouble at the front and they're like all right that'll be uh seven dollars i was like seven dollars what no way no like that's not what a mcdouble costs i was like i must be dreaming <laughs> and then i stopped and i was like oh my god i am dreaming <laughs> and then that like so funny <laughs> <laughs> like the walls to the McDonald's, like like they like got pulled off into the void, and I was like in complete whiteness. Like have you ever seen the episode of SpongeBob where Squidward goes back in time, you yes, know SB one two nine, and he's like in the all white room. That's what it was for me, and like it was literally for like half an hour. It felt like I could just imagine things and they'd appear. It was fantastic, very That's hard to control. Crazy, very hard to control. Uh, couldn't do it again if I tried, but like just being aware, like I could almost just manifest things into existence. Uh, basically, Dude, that is awesome. 
Yeah, I have. I unfortunately have never lucid dreamed outside of the one experience that nothing happened in. Yeah, but, um, it's, isn't it strange to think that we dream all the time? Like, it's not even really clear what dreams are, what dreams mean. But like, our subconsciouses they come up with these images. They like remember faces. Like something that I read yeah, once yeah. from dreams is like all the faces that you see, none of them are made up. They're all like people that you've seen in passing. Which at this point, I've probably seen millions of people in my lifetime. If I'm really being honest. Yeah, so dreaming is fascinating. I uh, I was interested in it for a really long time. Um, but, and, like, I had all kinds of, like, theories on, like, why we dream, why we dreamt, and, like, all this stuff. Yeah. And uh, I don't want to go, go into it too much just because, like, I don't have time for it. But um, I think one of the reasons that we dream is essentially, like, our mind, like, training us for um hypothetical situations in real life okay like Like in what in what sense i guess so like placing us in a situation and us like experiencing it already so if it ever happened in real life like we would know what to do like you feel what i'm (laughs) yeah yeah um it's funny that you say that because like all the all the things that i've like all the things i've dreamed about it's like there have been some very specific scenarios I don't think I'm ever going to yeah. see. In one dream, I was, um, yeah. I think one of the most frightening dreams I ever had, I was chased by velociraptors. Like, have you ever seen, I believe it was Dude. in the Lost World when they're running through the, um, when they're running through the, like, tall grass and velociraptors are chasing them. It was Dude, exactly you need like to be that. be careful. You need to be careful. The day that velociraptors come is soon, my friend. And I am soon. Not You've seen ready Jurassic for it. World. Uh, I hate it. Yeah. You know what? This would be like three podcasts in a row that we've talked about that. I don't want to talk uh, about Jurassic World. No, we will talk um, about it. Um, I do want to say, though, before we move on from the topic of dreaming, um, um, have you ever experienced sleep paralysis? Uh, you know, I've experienced something similar, I believe, to sleep paralysis. I think I think we've talked about this at I some point. Have, yeah. Yeah. It's just an interesting conversation. No, it's but, terrifying. Um, it's terrifying. Oh, it is terrifying. To this day, I think it's the scariest thing that has ever happened to me. Except for maybe one thing, which I will also mention in a minute. But, um, so, my my experience with sleep paralysis was, essentially what it is, if you don't know, is like, you are, um, you're, you're dreaming, like you're asleep, and you, like, get woken up suddenly from, like, um, it could be like a loud noise or like yeah. someone like shaking you or something like some something just like a very abrupt like waking up and it's where like your mind is awake but your body is still asleep essentially mm-hmm. like that's mm-hmm. kind of the idea behind it and so because of that like you can go like a minute like to like 15 minutes or something like yeah it might Ugh. not be that long but like Ugh. with being paralyzed like unable to move i don't think 15 minutes is real but like up to five minutes or something like just completely you you can't do anything and oftentimes like since you're still kind of in a dream like state um you'll just hallucinate and see things mm. and this happened to me one time and it is so freaky so i was um a wee boy probably second grade <laughs> And um, I've told you this story, right? Yeah, yeah, I know, I know so, what's to come. I know how frightening yeah. it is. So I was in second grade, and I was asleep in my room, and there was a wild thunderstorm raging, mm. and I assume that just like really loud thunder woke me up, like very suddenly, and I woke up, and I couldn't move couldn't move so like it kind of freaked me out yeah and like i was just kind of like looking to the left and like trying to move like and turn over and then i looked to the right which is where um my closet is and standing in front of my closet was a man and he was just staring right Mm -mm. at me Mm -mm. i don't like that i don't like that and (laughs) it gets worse it gets worse and i try to scream and I can't, like, I can't scream, I can't run, I can't do anything but close my eyes. So, you know, like, that's the only thing that made me feel safe. Like, so I close my eyes, 
And yeah. then when I opened them, he was closer and still mm. staring at me. Mm-mm. Mm-mm. And, like, I'm trying to scream. I'm trying to run. I can't. I can't. So I just closed my eyes again. Like, and looking back, it's like, no, this, like, ugh, I yeah. wouldn't have done that the same way. But, like, I was, you know, a second grader, whatever. Yeah. But I closed my eyes again and opened them a third time. And he's, like, right next to me like his face is probably <laughs> this close to my face just mm. like i assume like, you're you're yeah, indicating I'm, I'm, very close <laughs> i i'm indicating very close and oh my gosh like <laughs> in this moment like i like shut my eyes again and i like i kind of like leapt forward so like i finally like came out of this like state and i leapt forward and start screaming <laughs> and like i just i don't stop screaming i don't open my eyes like nothing and then yeah. like, my parents rush into the room and like i don't know if both of them did or not i, I yeah i don't remember <clears throat> but like you know kids screaming in the middle of the night like comments yes yeah. but like <laughs> night no tippers. man i remember but, i um, remember but uh, yeah the man was gone completely a figment of my imagination but yeah. like freaky 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 and i don't have a great memory and the fact yeah. that i remember it so vividly to this <clears throat> very day just testifies to how scary it was i remember i had some friends growing up when i was like real young that i'd go over and like none of them had it but like i had a few friends like when i was in like fifth grade i remember going to a friend's house and uh he and his mom told me that his um uh, his older brother had night terrors and like his older brother was in like seventh grade. And I was like, night terrors. Like, what does that mean? They're like, well, it's just like these, this horrible form of nightmare where like, uh, like people will sleepwalk and they'll like scream and they'll look like zombies. Like what's happening? Like they walk around and stuff and they're like, yeah, it's basically like, you just kind of have to like deal with it. Like we just want to warn you in case something like that happens. And it never did. But the thought that, like, that happens to some people, like, some people are so actively engaged in, like, dreams or, like, nightmares that they, like, get up and walk around and, like, it could be dangerous, man. Like, people could fall yeah. downstairs or people, like, it's scary. It's scary. And it's also scary. just thinking about, like, somebody waltzing around your house in the middle of the night, like, um, that would just be so scary. Like, they're asleep, but they're moving yeah. around and they're, they're like, not even frightened. Aware of what they're doing. Yeah. Like, that is, that is horrifying. Ooh, I don't like that. Yeah. So um, the other thing I wanted to mention, the scary thing, um, which this isn't about like um, anything like dream related, but um, it is a follow up to something we've talked about previously. Okay. Um, you know the story that I told you about the uh, the cars. Yeah. Like how they would, how it's happened to me three times, and they yeah. like, turned off their headlights and gotten into my lane. Yeah. Um. So uh connor thompson yeah uh, messaged me about it and apparently there 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 was something going on like when we were in high school yeah um that he was made aware of where it's like it's like some kind of like gang initiation like ritual like like it's a gang like induction ritual or something and like what they would do is turn off their headlights pull into the lane and then usually people would just slam on their brakes and like yeah. honk but if when people did that like they would start shooting at the car oh my god dude like around so, where we live yeah so i no. don't think that's a thing anymore yeah. that's... but like i also don't know if that's true it's just I mean, you know it's one of those it. things yeah but, like we were high schoolers, like, you know, we would have bought anything, but that's, but dude, that's scary. Like, that's scary that stuff like that happens, you know, even regardless of if there's happened to me, regardless of if they're like shooting guns or anything, you know, like, let's take that out of the equation. Just the fact that they're like part of their initiation is pulling into yeah. the opposite lane and turning off. Like that's, you cause head on collisions. People die from stuff like that, man. Yeah. It's not like, it's not a joke. Like people, no, you know, whatever. Um, you know. Yeah, and Enough. I mean, I don't, that still doesn't explain how it happened, like, yeah. all the way in Tennessee, yeah. or, like, the fact that Gangs it's happened are, to me three times. They're far-reaching, like, man. They just, they just know you. They, you're a good inductee. Dude, I'm a uh, target, For their man. new people. Um, <laughs> enough scary stuff. Uh, we're actually going yeah. to be introducing our second guest 
of the podcast yes. ever. Uh, you know him, you love him. His name is the Time Cop. He used to help us out here at Rapture Films, the one and only Jacob Ginnon. Good old Jacob Ginnon. All right. Uh, just here he is. <laughs> All right. And we're live here with uh, Jacob Ginnon. How's it going, buddy? We're not live. We're not live. <laughs> we're not live. <laughs> this is the farthest thing from live we could be. <laughs> Oh my gosh, we're two weeks in the past. <laughs> <laughs> well, Jacob, it's great to have you here with us. Uh, how has your evening been thus far? It's been good. Um, I have a quick story, actually, regarding my night. Um, oh, so okay. I'm, oh, I'm, yeah. curr- I'm currently in Austin, <laughs> Texas, and if there's a, there's a food place probably around every corner, and if there's not a food place, then there's a beer place around every corner. And okay, tonight, nice. me and a few of my coworkers <laughs> went to a place that sells alcoholic ice cream. Oh. Now, <laughs> now, I want you guys to describe what you think that would be like. Uh, I'm thinking vodka popsicles. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I do think... I. Well, you said ice cream, so is it ice cream? It is. It's very, it's very much ice cream, and they like infuse Mm. alcohol with it. So, (laughs) I ordered some sort of sundae, and it tasted like. Imagine that. (laughs) Okay. It can't be good. No. Okay. So I had high hopes, and I guess I don't know why, but this (laughs) this ice cream like, okay, you know when you taste something that reminds you of a smell. Yeah. So you ever crack open a fresh can of paint? That <laughs> smell is what was in my mouth. Dude, I, I picture you via this ice in. cream. I picture you walk oh in and you're God. like, "I'd like a, can I get a, a banana split?" And he goes, "Sure." And he gives you a banana split and you go, "Where's the alcohol?" And he pours like a can of Bush Light in it. <laughs> <laughs> he goes, "There you go. You happy?" <laughs> they actually just oh chuck God. alcohol at your face. <laughs> Uh, so Jacob, you said yeah, you're you said I, uh, you're in Texas. Um, oh, sorry, Josh, were you gonna go off on something? No, I was just gonna talk yeah. about ice cream. Oh, <laughs> I was gonna ask. Uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, you wanna? You wanna uh, I guess tell us a little bit about what you've been doing in Texas. Yeah, well, I just hate myself, and I love sweating so much. And I was like, well, where's the hottest place I can hang out for three months? And mm. Texas mm. is the place. Um, yeah, it's a ploy to lose weight. <laughs> yeah, it's actually really Keep smart that I'm here. <laughs> um, <laughs> but I am interning at the Austin Film Festival, um, which is a pretty big festival for writing, screenwriting. Um, it's mainly a screenwriting festival. I think this year we had 10,000 script submissions. Um, and those range from podcasts to feature-length films to shorts to oh. stage plays, any, anything you can you know, perform, I suppose. Yeah. Yeah, cool. It is. <laughs> <laughs> I thought you were going to say No, more. I I mean, <laughs> I I guess funny It's uh it's a lot more um <laughs> I guess I don't know what the word is. The office is very relaxed. The office culture is very cool. There are uh six dogs present um oh, in the office. Wow. Yeah, all the staff nice. all the staff members like bring in their animals. <laughs> so, that's, that's that's pretty interesting. I've just like never been in a place like that but very cool yeah learning learning a whole lot so are you ready to be back maybe in we'll send in a oh <laughs> yeah are you ready to go back to indiana uh yes i am very much <laughs> i am uh living in this is like the first time i've moved to a place and not known anyone like mm. here um yeah. and i'm also no longer an hour away from my family or like uh. You know, immediately near them, so that's that's very weird. Um, but yeah, ready to go yeah, back. Ready to see my yeah. friends. Ready to. Ready to see me. I'm ready for the beer prices to drop ten dollars because it is just <laughs> everything's ridiculous out here. <laughs> I just want some chocolate ice cream. I don't, I don't want al- alcoholic <laughs> nonsense. What do you put liquor? Please stop. <laughs> I, I hate the liquor green beans. <laughs> <laughs> they just cook everything in liquor. Yesterday I had four burgers and all of them were 40 proof. <laughs> <laughs> oh. oh my goodness. 
<laughs> Dude, so we'll just uh we'll just send an episode of our podcast over to your uh to your place of work mm. and uh and let them shred bang, bang, it apart. Boom. That's <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and let Jacob and the other interns just be like huh, trash. That's a a large part of our job <laughs> is, is uh calling garbage. out um funny things that cuz like pretty much all the screenwriting interns are usually reading when they're in the office. So yeah. A large part of my day is just hearing like like funny parts of scripts that are just not, you know, not very good. Um, yeah. So we just sit and kind of like roast these <laughs> scripts together. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, it's great to think that if my script doesn't get accepted, you guys will make fun of me for it. Oh yeah, just know. <laughs> Behind every bad submission is a group of teenagers roasting it. <laughs> That's comforting. That's very comforting. Oh boy. <laughs> So that's what you've been doing ever since you betrayed us, is a uh, rough four souls. <laughs> yep. I'm very <laughs> cynical now, actually. <laughs> oh, man. No, speaking of that, you know, Jacob, the other day, um, on the first podcast, Josh and I were talking speaking about of how... Betrayal. we No, no. We were talking about how we met. We were talking about how Josh and I met over Minecraft, and I was like, you know, it's kind of ironic, because I met you over Super Smash Brothers. Do you, mm. do you remember that? Yes, I do. Yeah, yeah. So uh, all your yeah, relationships no, are founded upon video games. <laughs> well, all, video games and YouTube, basically. The other mm-hmm. guests that we had, Ty, I met, like, the past three podcasts have talked about how I met people, and it's been video game, YouTube, video game. So I can't make friends <laughs> in real life, basically. What it's I'm all doing. digital. <laughs> yeah. Ones oh, and man. zeros, baby. Um, you know, I was looking through some of your old... Uh, your old videos, uh, Jacoby Pro videos. I watched the best of Outlast again, and I'm not gonna lie, man. Nice. There, there are days that I'm like, you know, I could really stand for having some more of this content available to me. Uh, um, <laughs> you know, that's not a uh, that's not a cry for me to say make more. It's saying uh, I will credit you as Jacoby Pro if you if you join us in our Fortnite videos. <laughs> yeah. Guess who's back from the grave? <laughs> it's Your Jacoby Pro. Pro. <laughs> oh man yes dude, we'll get like a thousand views maybe a hundred thousand <laughs> really dude, our market Ooh. with the ladies is gonna shoot through the roof they see that hair and they're like <laughs> i can't <laughs> wait <laughs> for I, that i remember that boy <laughs> <laughs> yeah no that's never happening again so you best not get your hopes <laughs> up <laughs> whoa dude, so do you want to do you want to talk a little bit about like what you have been doing since we since we unfortunately parted ways like what you've been up to with the filming and in all yeah i've been telling everyone how much i hate you guys and how i'm glad i left Aww. nothing productive it's all just being mean um so i've been doing you haven't made anything since you've just been <laughs> yep i let i let us. people know how bad you are <laughs> i appreciate it i appreciate it um so I've kind of been focusing more on writing as opposed to making stuff. Um, so, oh boy, the first like thing I really ever shot in college was Welcome's April. And I'm sure you guys have seen that. Blake was in it. Um, yeah. oh, well, introduce yourself <laughs> as Jeff, of course. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, that was I was very very excited about that script. And then all of my projects since then have just been kind of like me trying new filming techniques. And not so much focusing on the story, um, or like kind of what's be, you know what's being told on screen. So I've been kind of not creating as much as I am like writing and like kind of trying to study st- like story structure. Um, yeah. And this uh, this film festival isn't really helpful because at the beginning they give you examples of like, hey, these are our scripts that have won the competition. So like this is kind of like your line. This is what you're like basing things off of. So. I definitely feel like I kind of have a better understanding of like this is what a good script is supposed to look like, um, mm-hmm. so that's very cool. I've also kind of learned more about like the writing industry. Um, one of the okay, so one of these kids I intern with, he goes to like a film school. I don't, I don't remember the name of it, but the guy. Okay, you know the movie Pacific Rim. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so he went to school or to the same school that the writer of Pacific Rim went to, and I guess at the okay. the end of your. Uh, four years at the school, you go to either New York or California and they just kind of, you kind of like get introduced to like studio heads or like, you know, re- like receptionists of like fancy studios to kind of like just get a feel for like the environment. Um, mm-hmm. And this kid, this Pacific Rim kid, 
he they go on this trip and he disappears the first day they get there. They're like, <laughs> dude, where'd he go? Like no one's seen him. And then they get like they're in the airport, like flying back to their state, and they find him. Like he's there. And they're like, dude, where have you been? He's like, Oh yeah, I sold two scripts. They're <laughs> like, what? <laughs> like So he like he ventured out on his own and made over a million dollars in a week, like selling scripts that he had written. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. He hasn't so I looked him up. He hasn't really done too much since, but like that's just like an incredible story. I'm like, what the heck? Oh my gosh. Yeah. <laughs> just very, very cool. That's insane. Yeah, like imagine that's like so imagine cool. going on like your eighth grade field trip to like the zoo. <laughs> and like at the end of the day when they like get on the bus to go back, you've made like a fortune selling t shirts. Yeah. <laughs> it's like Where have you yeah. been? <laughs> Making that sweet dough. <laughs> So yeah, I think I'm slowly kind of understanding more of what, yeah, kind of what it people to be a millionaire. <laughs> basically, yeah. I'm all in it for the cash, man. Um, <laughs> Cold hot, but dollars. yeah, kind of like what is it because we weren't paying you enough? <laughs> is that why you left us? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, this unpaid internship well, really kicks your guys' right offer in the you teeth. If you want it. <laughs> I've got 35 cents right here for you mm. if you want it. Wow, hot dog. I'll you know, that's right more than me. I will have made all summer, actually. <laughs> <laughs> it makes financial sense to videos. go back to you guys. <laughs> <laughs> I just so much shade by so much a better option. <laughs> oh. Man, Jacob, you've got, uh, you've got two years left. In school now, right? I mean, because mm-hmm. you graduated officially. I did. So you've got, got my got my big old degree. Yeah, you you're not better Your than big me. Big boy degree. Relax. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, no, it's it's weird. I've been thinking a lot about this because the other day, uh, you know, our other roommate Wyatt texted us and he was saying, you know, hey, second semester, if anybody uh, wants the room, let him have it. I was like, oh, you're leaving us? He's like, yeah, I'm graduating early. I was like, oh, okay. What? <laughs> and it occurred That's to me, fine. Like, man, Spring it on you. we're all gonna be le- like we're all gonna be leaving soon. Like this, this campus that I've come to know and love is home. You know, for the past four years, pretty soon it's gonna be gone. Like it this feels is it, like man. I just got here. It feels like I just got here. You know, mm-hmm. um, it's it's it doesn't. It sounds silly to say that it's not, but it doesn't feel the same as high school because this has been an entirely much more transformative experience. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And uh, it's weird to think that we'll be moving on again. What do you What do you guys think about that? I mean, you're you're in the same boat, Jacob. You've got a little longer, but <laughs> well, that's why I'm going to grad school because I'm not ready for that. You know, next step. I'm just going to keep getting <laughs> okay. master's degrees and never make a dollar. <laughs> <laughs> for as long as you live, you'll never have to pay back the debt as long as you're still in school. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, it's the strangest, like, it's the strangest combination of two different emotions. Because, like, on one hand, like, I'm extremely excited about the future and, like, to start my life. Yeah. But then on the other hand, like, it's terrifying. Like, for one, I don't want to give up, like, like, being, like, like, having no responsibility and just, like, playing all the time. Oh, yeah. But, like, that's so nice. like I don't know, like, it's it's exciting, but it's freaky. Like... I don't know. I don't know if I'm ready for it. One uh, one thing that I've kind of, like, learned about being here, like, by myself, like, friends p- play a much bigger role in, like, my life than I thought they did, which is kind of, like, it's an easy thing to say, yeah. and you're like, oh, yeah, easy, but, like, I don't know, coming here and not, and, like, knowing zero people, so, like, mm-hmm. my, day can, my day consisted of waking up, like, eating breakfast, working out, going to work, and then I come home and I'm in my room, like, until the next day when I do it again. Yeah. So, I mean, like, this idea of, like, leaving all these people that I just, like, am used to hanging out with, like, and I won't be anymore. It's yeah. very, str- very strange. No, it's it's yeah. weird because it's just, it's one of those things, like, I felt the same way when I first, uh, like, left for college. I was like, you know, I didn't know, it. I came here, I knew my friend Florida, and that was, that was basically it. Um, and I, I made new friends. I just feel like it gets harder the older you get like I almost feel like I'm I'm stubborn when it comes to meeting new people like not because I mean to be but it's like I don't really seek out new people in classes and stuff because I have enough social circles as is right now like the days that gonna come that like when whenever I move away like I've got to meet 
Like to start over, again, yeah. Meet new people, start over. And that <clears throat> feels like that's just how it's always going to be, you know? If you're always moving around, if you've always got this. You'll always have people that you can talk to and people that you can connect with, but you have to know people in certain areas, you know what I mean? Like, you can yeah. talk to us all you want, but it's at the end of the day, you know, we're, we're not readily available for you. Like, we can play video games or whatever, but it's not like we could grab a beer with you since an alcoholic... Uh, Ice cream or something like a that. A Sunday, yeah. Since you're a booze, yeah. Since you're a booze guzzler. <laughs> yeah, you go, I can't wait to get home with a beer is cheaper. It's like, whoa, are you okay, Jacob? <laughs> well, it's just like, okay, so I every time I go out, so the big thing in Austin, it's called 6th Street. Um, it's, I mean, it's a, it is straight up four or five blocks of bars, and, like, that's all it is. Um, and every... Thursday, Friday, and Saturday night, the city of Austin will block off the surrounding streets. So, like, police, like, will block it off. And it becomes a block oh. party. Every Thursday, that's Friday, so, and Saturday. So awesome. It's very cool. Um, but it's like, it's like, it's a Thursday. Like, <laughs> like chill out. I don't know. You um, got work tomorrow, man. Quit yeah. slamming shots. <laughs> <laughs> but I went to, like, a trivia night, like, the other day. And the a, a pitcher there was, like, $17. Which is, like... You know, whatever. But I was thinking, like, man, at Ball State, it's like five dollars for one of those. Yeah, like, <laughs> no, I, I remember uh, when I was in California, my friend Ty, uh, he's the guy from the last episode. He he said, you know, he's like, oh, we're lucky if it's discounted. A picture will be like fifteen bucks. I was like, are you serious? Like, what are you yeah. talking about? We got penny, we got penny pictures, dude. What's what's wrong with you guys? <laughs> yeah, it also it also made me realize, like, after so like. It, the uh, like Austin is the home of uh, University of Texas, so like okay. that it is a college town. Like the northern part of the city is a college town, yeah. but like <laughs> yeah. I can't um, I can't imagine like like hanging out with your friends at UT is going to like this block party of bars like every week. Like that's there every weekend. <laughs> mm-hmm. Versus you know he, like in Muncie you have you know maybe four bars to choose from. Like yeah, I don't know. Just very very interesting. Yeah, when you graduate, you get a new degree and a new liver. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Um, do you have any, like, uh, like any fun college stories, I guess, you want to share? Any, like, just really great memories you have uh, that you're comfortable sharing with the entire world? You know, all the billions <laughs> and billions of people watching this podcast. Right now, actually. <laughs> Because we'll we're, we're live, yeah. Oh yeah, because we're live. I see, uh, I see a little <laughs> live, like a bunch of comments below talking about how handsome you are. So you should I, be, <laughs> feel disarmed about that. I, I tweeted a link to our Twitch stream, so we should <laughs> have plenty of views. Uh, this is actually playing in between the Super Bowl. The Super Bowl is right now. <laughs> yeah, the Super Bowl an hour long right spot, now. like in the middle of the yeah. Super Bowl. <laughs> <laughs> this is this is the halftime show. That's how yeah. we know we've made it. <laughs> we get up and the Super Bowl's really going downhill. <laughs> <laughs> they had Beyonce booked, but we took her. We stole her thunder. <laughs> Man, a college story. Yeah. <sighs> uh, I can't. Okay. You need to sit on it. Yeah. No, I mean, so one one that comes. To, I'm trying to think if I like. If there's one that I like, tell people a lot. Um, I don't really know. Well, the I time mean, we killed that guy. <laughs> you can't forget that. Am I, am I right, fellas? Huh? <laughs> um, Blake, I remember one night we were. Uh, <laughs> I mean, if you feel uncomfortable about this, you can stop me. But one night you know we what? were. <laughs> what are we going? Like, do you care? I'm gonna do it. <laughs> Listen, you know, I asked you. I asked you. You go. Okay, go so no, no, regrets. we were. It was just the roommates, so there's, you know, me, Blake, and two other guys, and we didn't really have a plan, we were just kind of, like, in the mood to drink, so we were, we were you know, drinking, we're having, having beers, and uh, we got out a deck of cards, and they're, like, we weren't playing a card game, we were just, like, I just picked up a card, and I go, hey, if this is a club, you gotta, like, drink your beer, so we started with a full deck, <laughs> and I was, like, you know, you kind of, like, make these, like, small little bets on, like, you know, whatever card you're flipping up. But eventually, like, your bets can become more specific as you get, like, nearer to the bottom of the deck because you know what cards are left. So they started getting more elaborate. And I remember I was really proud of my bet. I said, if this is a nine of diamonds, you guys have to walk around tomorrow with an umbrella regardless of the weather. (laughs) (laughs) 
It did. It didn't happen. <laughs> but what ended up happening, Blake and I lost. Um, one of our roommates. It was. This was a. Uh, it was in the winter, December or January. Very cold. Uh, and yeah. They said, "All right, if this is, you know, the Jack of Clubs, you guys have to go knee deep into the White River, which was about half a block away from, you know, our house." Oh my gosh. So of course, you know, we lost, and we're, you know, uh, we we were a few beers in, and uh, so Blake and I run down. I am in one one <laughs> flip flop because I don't own flip flops, so I had to borrow a flip flop and. I hike up my jeans and we go there was still knee snow deep. On the ground. There was snow on the ground. <laughs> yeah. Do you remember that? Yes, yeah. I, so Blake and I hike up our jeans and we go knee deep into this pool and we're just screaming, just <laughs> yelling. <laughs> <laughs> then we held, we held it in there and we, we ran back. Um, mm. I remember, I remember sprinting through like the surfaces that I was crossing, man, like asphalt, gravel, it didn't matter. Like I was just sprinting home because I didn't want to <laughs> lose my feet to frostbite. <laughs> like I was afraid like, by the I time... Think, uh... Go ahead. <laughs> no, I, I, I just think I think we should tell. I think we should co-tell uh, a story that we experienced together. Uh, which one? Um, um. So when you were visiting Johnson, yeah, and the Sesh, the Szechuan sauce craze was going on. <laughs> oh yeah, you remember? Oh yeah. Oh my gosh, dude, that is. <laughs> okay. Okay. Yeah. Everybody needs okay, to tune in so... for this. Yeah. So all you listeners out there, was. get ready. Listen. Yeah. Hey, all you guys, oh, quit talking about Jacob's hair. Oh man. <laughs> all right. So <laughs> I don't even know where to begin. Okay. So basically, so, it starts. Uh, we went to oh, McDonald's. Okay, we went to McDonald's, and uh, it was during the time where they had just stocked up on Szechuan sauce, and this is when like people were hoarding it and like trying to sell it online yeah. for hundreds of dollars, and like. But, like, I just went and I was like, I want to go, I want to get one for myself, and I want to get a couple, like, for some of my friends. Because, like, some of my friends <laughs> were, were, like, either a big fan of the show or just, Rick like, Morty. Yeah. just wanted some. So, like, so, um, I go, and I get, like, five or six packets of Szechuan sauce. And we head back to school, and I distribute them. And it comes down to one. I have one left. And... <laughs> And I, uh, I, I go to give it to someone. I have very, someone very specific in mind. And I go to give it to them, and I see that they already have one on their desk. Like, they had gone earlier <laughs> that day. So, so I don't give it to him, and I'm like, all right, I'm just going to give it to some random person. And um, so I, I go out into the hallway, and I tell one of my friends, it's like, hey, I have Szechuan sauce for you. Come get it. And they start coming to get it. And I don't remember who it was. I don't remember the exact person it was. I think it was Avery. Yeah. I think it was Avery. But, like, so I tell them to come get it, and I tell them where I am. And, like, they're walking down the hallway. And I'm just, like, sitting in the hallway next to my friend Brayden, like, with this pack of Szechuan sauce. And I don't know why this came over me, but I was, like, I just had the thought. I was, like, I'm not going to give it to him. (laughs) And, And, like... So I lean over to Brayden, and I'm like, Brayden, you have to stop Avery. I'm going to make a run for it. And, like, and like no, no, like, explanation or anything. He's just like, okay. So, like, Avery gets really close to us, and then I jump up and bolt. And, like, Brayden just, like, grabs him. And, and like, I just sprint away. And this turns very quickly into a into manhunt. A large scale it's a manhunt. manhunt. <laughs> okay. There are like nine people chasing. Me. Okay. So, so like, I, you can, yeah, you can yeah. take over. So I'll tag you in. I was but... I was right here when this happened. He Braden, this guy, he, he's a he's a big guy, and he just blocked he blocked the whole hallway, and he's like, I'm sorry, I don't even know. He he like apologized. He's like, I don't even know why I'm blocking you, but Josh told me to. So Josh runs off. So like I'm I'm thoroughly convinced like what's happening is a sham. Like, we need to get a hold of him. So I organize, <laughs> I organize a rally. I'm like, we're gonna find this man, we're gonna get this Szechuan sauce back. I'm not gonna let this happen. Not on, not on this campus. No, no. So I put together, I put together a crack team. I don't realize, though, that in this crack team, there's a mole. There's somebody who's working with Josh that I never would have expected. So it seems like every single time, like, we're out to find Josh, and we'll see him, but he's one step ahead. 
And why? Because he's being <laughs> alerted. He's being told by somebody from the inside, somebody I trusted. Well, eventually, what happens is we've got Nerf guns. So we've all got Nerf guns, and we're chasing him down. And we hear Josh <laughs> scream. And, like, out of, I swear, it's dark at night, and it's just on this nice, peaceful, serene campus in Tennessee. And Josh goes, ah! And he's, like, <laughs> screaming, running. And behind him, I see, like, no joke, it looks like a war zone. Like, from all areas of campus, men just start descending on him. There's probably <laughs> ten... 10 or 11 of us, and we're just chasing after him as fast as we can. Okay, I don't want you to jump ahead, though, because there are some very important key things that happen, like, <laughs> before the before the finale. Um, so, I get away from everyone. Like, I don't know how, but, like, I escape everyone that was chasing me. And, like, I, I go up to my room, and I grab a blanket. And I'm like, it's like a camouflage blanket, so I'm just being super extra. And I'm like, you know, like, being camouflaged by this blanket. So I'm, like, creeping around, just, like, waiting for them to find me. And and I run to one of my friends and because I see them all. And I see them, but it's, like, a bad situation. Like, they're everywhere, and there's no way I was going to be able to escape <laughs> So I run into my friend's room, my friend Cal, who was not participating. Currently. Oh no, this is the mole. And I run in, <laughs> I run in, I run into the room, and I'm like, Cal, you have to hide me, like, <laughs> like, and and he's like, okay, okay, just go into the bathroom. I'll tell him it's someone else. So I run into the bathroom, and then they just file in, <laughs> <laughs> and they file into this room, and they're like, we know he's in here, and like. <laughs> Cal's like, Cal's like, no, it's, it's a, he said, sna our friend Snail, his nickname's Snail. He's like, no, it's just Snail in the bathroom. And like, like, Cal somehow convinces them to leave momentarily. But I think it was a trap on your guys' part. Like, you were trying to lure me out. Yeah. Um, so like, they all leave the room. I leave the bathroom and I walk up to the door and I look at Cal's like, should I jump out the window? <laughs> <laughs> And, like, keep in mind, he's on the second story. Mm. So, like, like jumping out the window is, like, a legit move. Mm. And, like, it is a power play. But power I decide play. against it. I decide against it. And right when this happens, I hear the doorknob turn. Like, they're coming in. So I bolt into the, like, closet that's, like, right next to it. Um, it's not even a closet. It's just, like, a little area to hang clothes. And I, like, dive into this area. And they just start, again, just filing. <laughs> and and I look at Cal, and I'm like, now! And, like, Cal <laughs> grabs one of them, and I just start running. <laughs> and and Brayden and Blake both grab it. And I, like, We catch the blanket. Brayden. We catch the blanket. <laughs> and, and he really... No, 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 no. Wait, wait, wait. So I throw Brayden's arm off of me, and I'm running, and Blake is right next to me. And I just... <laughs> Just an expert move. Just take the blanket that's wrapped around me and just chuck it behind me at Blake's feet. And Blake just eats it. And I, and I escape. And I hit the deck, man. <laughs> but, like, this goes on for, like, this manhunt goes on for, like, an hour and a half. It does. Least. And, like... <laughs> And, like, we corner people are betraying each other. <laughs> and finally, we get to the finale. We corner it's like at the river. I, I, go, I go and recruit Cal again. And I said, Cal, I've got to end this. It's gone too far. <laughs> and I tell him, I'm going to throw the Szechuan sauce into the river. <laughs> it's the only way that I can end it. <laughs> so, I need to do what so has to be Cal done. And I, <laughs> I gotta do what has to be done. So Cal and I suit up, and we start going through, uh, we start wandering towards the river, like, walking through the night. And at this point, like, I tell some of the people that's, like, that are, like, chasing me, I text them, and I'm like, meet me at the campfire, let's end this. And the campfire, like, on the, the fire pit end. is, like... Yeah, it's it's not where the river is. But it's, like, close enough to where, like... They, they would, yeah, yeah, yeah. Me. So, so I'm going with Cal, and I see them. Like, I see them, like, hiding behind trees and stuff, and, like, waiting for me to come to the fire pit, like, so they can pounce. <laughs> and I'm going, 
And one of the guys that's chasing me, Elijah, sees me. And he just starts walking towards me, like, pretending like mm-hmm. he's not participating. <laughs> and I know what's happening. And Cal knows what's happening. And Elijah knows what's happening. We all know what's about to go down. So Elijah just yells. He's like, here he is! And, like, runs at me. And Cal, like, leaps in front of him and grabs him. And he's like, go, Josh, go! Go to the river! And, like... <laughs> So, and keep in mind, this is, like, midnight at on campus. And, like, we're screaming this stuff, like, right outside of the girls' <laughs> dorm. And, like, and like I'm <laughs> bolting to the river. And I get there before everybody else. And, like, <laughs> Dude, we just have a standoff on the, at the side of the I river. I recall, because and, uh, I remember you, you yelled, <laughs> you yelled, don't come any closer! And, like, all of this stuff. <laughs> And, like, there's a, there's a couple, there's a couple walking alongside, like, near the river, and they stop, because they're, like, frozen in fear, and, like, I, and then Avery, he lifts up his Nerf gun, and he goes, oh, shoot, I'll do it! <laughs> and I, I, oh, my I, God! And, like, I, we have to go over, and I'm like, no, 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 they're fake, we're, we're, this isn't a real situation, please, just go it's about your night. straight up, but... <laughs> So they leave, and then it just turns into a straight up like Mexican standoff, and it's like everybody's got guns pointed at each other, and I'm holding the Szechuan sauce up above my head. I'm like, I'll throw it in the river, and like, oh my gosh, that was such a ridiculous night. It's and yeah. just so you know, the Szechuan sauce mm, ended up in man. the river, and uh, that Jacob, have you ever had any of that Szechuan? Sauce? No, I can't say that I have. <laughs> But actually, yeah, we oddly, made, we made oddly enough, the same thing happened to me. I was chasing a guy who had some, and <laughs> he threw it in a river. <laughs> oh dang! When you missed out, isn't that a story? That though? is something that, that was incredibly experience? elaborate for, like a drop of sauce. <laughs> for a st- <laughs> no, it, see, the thing was, it was just like a spur of the moment thing, like. I ran off, and everybody decided at the same time. They were like, we're going to make this into a memory. And, like, it devolved so quickly. So quickly. Oh, my gosh. It was so good. All right, Blake, it's your turn to tell a story, because Jacob and I both have. But Oh, I don't, I don't have a... I'm going to put you on the spot. Oh, you mean a, you mean a um, college right, it's story? It's not a college story, but... Uh, it's not even a college Wait, story, me... but I want you to tell the coon fishing story. The coon fishing story? Nah, I've told that story too many times. I want to I tell a different story. Yeah, nice nice uh, try, uh, Josh. Right. Another time, another time. Yeah, yeah. No, that'd be, be pull a fast that'd one. Be too, that'd be too <laughs> easy. Maybe maybe another time. Um, Jacob, do we, have any, do we have any fun memories together? I don't recall any. You know, I've never had fun <laughs> with you. <laughs> I've never had a good time with you, ever. <laughs> You've always just been tagging along while I do things. <laughs> <laughs> oh no i like think oh, wait wait wait. Favorite, i think my favorite like my I... favorite uh like my favorite memory um of us yeah is when you introduced me to Jeff. oh yeah i remember that you guys just played uh mario tennis all night <laughs> i re- i have a good memory involving jacob that you can you can definitely add on to one of my favorite things uh when i first came to college is i found out just how like how many people Jacob knew and how popular Jacob was. And my favorite joke to make was that I lived in his shadow because all the time, all the time we'd walk around campus and like, we'd be having a good time and like chatting it up and people would approach him and he'd have like a couple minute conversations. And like, this would just happen excessively like Ginnon, just the most popular man in the world. And every time I'd look at him and be like, Hey, you know, it gets, it's a little cold. Yeah. Living in your shadow. There was, I don't know if we were, I don't know if we were filming one of the magic offs, but we were outside of our dorm and it, I mean, like unplanned, it happened straight up like three times in a row in like three minute increments. Like different people came out and Blake would just look at me every time and like grimace. (laughs) It was just, there's just, there's just people walking by and they're like, oh, hey, Jacob, Jacob, how are you? Hey, is is that Ginnon? Do, do I know you? No, but I know you. <laughs> My boy Ginnon. <laughs> oh, who's that behind me? Oh, that's no one. Don't worry. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's sad. I'm sad now. <laughs> no, I'm happy. Oh. 
Oh, you've you you're you're a popular boy now, Blake. Everyone on campus knows. Mm, your name. Yeah, yeah, no, Jacob, you're gonna come <laughs> back, and everybody will have forgotten since you went to Texas. We'll be like, who's that? I don't even know who that is. And you're like, you're my mom. Like, mom. <laughs> you. You bought my plane no, ticket. I thought. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> you, you dropped me off at the airport. What's going on? <laughs> I've only been gone for two months. You've completely forgotten about me. You go back to your house, and there's just a man living in your room, and they they think they oh, think yeah, it's Jacob, me. I forgot to tell you, we are uh, <laughs> we have a there's a new the Jacob covered of pictures of like your parents and this child. Hey Jacob, come like, here. We have a guest. You've been... Mom, it's I'm Jacob. <laughs> <laughs> You've been deftly removed from all the like all the family photos. Like it's not even bad Photoshop. It's like all the family photos. Like there are pictures of this guy like growing up, but like they're posed exactly like your baby pictures on the wall. You're like, how did you? How did you even I get did. this? <laughs> oh dear. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> All right, Jacob. What do you want to talk about? You get to choose. It's it's you your podcast. Anything. I'm the guest. You were supposed to be fa- fanning uh, me with uh, exotic leaves and feeding me grapes. Oh, oh yeah. That's so, what I expected yeah, with this. You're right. You're right. Our bad. <laughs> oh no! We no. They're coming. Uh, they they actually sent me a message uh, earlier. You need to unlock. The phone. Oh, okay. They'll come in. <laughs> Yeah, I can assure you that I have mailed you some grapes by the time you get them. You, uh, you know knows, you know how sad this is? So I game, actually, but... like, you can't see, but I just looked out my window, expect, like, I'm like, what are the odds that there are actually people waiting outside, like, looking confused about, like, where to go? <laughs> and they have these giant leaves. <laughs> <laughs> it was oh a quick look, because I was, just as quickly, I was like, that's stupid. That's the dumbest expectation to have. <laughs> You know, okay, so I was thinking about this, you know, Google is like the greatest ally for somebody as dumb as me, and I say that with, you know, the most respect, with the most self-respect I can, but like, today, I was sitting outside, and I looked at, I was like, just enjoying nature, and I looked at the, uh, the wall on the side of the house, and I watched an ant, and it was crawling along, and it fell, it like fell, uh, probably like four feet onto the, like, plank, and then it landed, no problem, and it kept walking. And I thought about it, like, proportional to body size, like, if that were a person, they would have just fallen, like, 300 <laughs> stories. <laughs> and so, so what do I, like, what do I Google? I Google, like, how, how far can an ant fall and survive? And I, I got taken to all these articles, and I was just reading about it, and I was like, isn't it great that we can look up, like, anything, like, no matter what stupid question we have, it can basically be answered. Like, somebody else has thought it you before know, me. Like, as dumb as I thought that was, like, somebody else looked it up first. So, <laughs> speaking of, like, general knowledge, I suppose, I was, uh, I was at a trivia night the other night, and, uh, turns out I'm really bad at it. And it was even, like, so, <laughs> the, uh, the company who, it's, like, kind of like a traveling trivia group, and they're called Geeks Who Drink. Um, so you, it's essentially all pop culture, like related, you know, themed questions or whatever. And I was of zero help to my team. I think out of eight rounds, each consisting of eight questions, uh, root canal was the only answer I could provide. (laughs) (laughs) Everything else I just (laughs) sat by while everyone else got it correct. Um, and that brought me to thinking about like, I was like, I don't know if I know too much about like. Like, I don't have a very wide knowledge base. Like, the only... So, I told this to my friends. The, no, the only don't... reason I know that the Northern Lights you know... are called Aurora Borealis is because Jack said he broke his Aurora Borealis as a joke. <laughs> so, I Googled it, and I go, oh, what did he break? And I was like, oh, those are, those are Northern Lights. Yeah. Like, what? <laughs> I broke my Northern Lights. No, that's a, that's a real prevalent... It's a real prevalent problem. Like, think about... The I feel like as a like as a whole like as a collective, humanity is the most intelligent it's ever been because we're capable of like looking up all of this information all the time. But individually, dude, we're we're like brain dead. I can't remember like <laughs> earlier I googled UPS's hours in months, <laughs> and an hour later I had to Google it again <laughs> because I already forgot. <laughs> I thought you were go- you had to Google something like elementary, like oh man, how do I brush my teeth, like. <laughs> 
Like, like I looked at the toothbrush and I looked at the toothpaste. I'm like, all right, <laughs> I've done this we're before. This out one oh way my gosh, another. I had such, I had such an embarrassing thing happen to me the other day. Like, it's kind of related to this, but um, so we were at uh, the the internship that I have, um, that I'm doing this summer. Like, I was at staff meeting for that. And I go to the bathroom, like, I leave the meeting and go to the bathroom. And, like, as I'm washing my hands, I'm thinking, like, like <laughs> I'm so embarrassed by this. But I'm thinking, and, like, I'm thinking, like, of a, um, of, like, a date of something that's coming up. And I'm like, uh, this is going to be on July, like, 20th, 2018. And I was just like, is it 2018, right? <laughs> And like, <laughs> like it's July, and I'm like, I'm like, is it 2018? Like, is that what year it is? And like, I legit, just, I, had, like, I had to Google it before I went oh back my gosh. because like, your confidence because, like, was dropping. I, like, no. <laughs> I was like, is it? You try, you try to casually like fit it I'm into like, your conversation I, when you go I, back. Be like, hey, can I get the date? <laughs> oh yeah, it's like July 16th. How, how many people? How many people? But like. But like, give me like the whole like thing. The like. whole <laughs> <laughs> How many people pretending do you think it would take to convince you you don't exist? Like, oh my gosh, I have. You? Okay, wait. Like, you gotta listen to this. You? Holy crap! So I was at. Oh man, I completely forgot about this. So I was at. It was a church camp. It was probably eighth grade, and uh, this was when flip phones were a thing, um, and we were in. We were in a different time zone. Like this church. Oh my gosh, guys, this is wild. So. Um, <laughs> we, we, were, we were in a different we were in so a different time zone right so it wasn't anything crazy like maybe one or two hours and it was the night before we had to leave um and that's usually the night when everyone stays up and just kind of like gets rowdy and you know whatever um so it was probably it was probably <laughs> oh, yeah. 1 a.m or no, no no it was much later than that i'm sorry it was like it was like three and we had to like be up and ready at seven and i was like i was with these guys and i was like hey i need to go back and like sleep for at least like an hour like it would not be healthy for me to like try to pack and like do all this stuff, you know, with no sleep. So I go back to my room by myself and I turn off the lights and I, I just can't sleep. I was like, man, they're probably like having fun. And I'm just in here like being lame. So <laughs> I, I go back into the room and they go, I, I was like, Hey guys, what's up? And they're like, Hey, we're about to get ready to go. Like, are you ready to leave? And I was like, what do you mean? And they're like, Jacob, it's like 6am. And I go, no, it's not. It's like, I was in my room for like a half hour and I checked my phone and it was set at like, it was like one, it was, or whatever, like 3.30 a.m. So I'm like, I'm like, yeah, no, you're like, you're wrong. They go, no, 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 dude. Like you were in your room for like four hours. And I go, no, I wasn't. I know I wasn't in that room for four hours. And they straight up, they like changed all their clocks on their own phones to manual time. <laughs> and they convinced me I had like <laughs> been asleep for four hours. And I knew that I was not in that room for more than 45 minutes. So it was my buddy. My buddy put on the best act too. He got like, you know, when you get kind of like scared about something and you start like tearing up. So he did that. He was like, dude, he, he goes, tears. dude, where did you go? Like, uh, where were you for four hours? I was like, I was not in that room for four hours. Like, you have to listen. To so they convinced me that I had like somehow fallen into a trance and was like, just like out of my mind for four hours. And then they finally like caved and they're like, nah, dude, it's like 4 a.m. I was like, what the heck? Oh, man. It was the biggest psychological dude, event I have ever thing. experienced. <laughs> I'm, I'm crippled with so much self doubt. Oh Two God. people can tell me I didn't say something. I'd be like, oh, "You're probably right. I don't think I said." It. But like, it was like a group of six guys all in on it, just convincing me that I was like losing yeah. my mind. They just—they knew that you were gonna come out. <laughs> they knew you weren't going to go to sleep. And yeah. Like, oh my gosh. Mess with them. <laughs> that's. Oh my goodness. That's crazy. Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> I can't. That is so. That is so funny, though. Like, it was, oh my gosh. I can't describe the awesome. like. And yeah. I, mean, you remember I can't it, describe so, like, the fear of someone <laughs> looking me in the eye and go, "Jacob, you were in that room for four hours," and I go, "No, I wasn't." <laughs> You're wrong. Oh my gosh. Um, well, uh, Josh. I, I think that's about all the time we've got right now for uh, our guest, Jacob. 
I want to say thanks. For our good old Jake. Again. Absolutely. No, thanks so much for uh, for joining us. Oh, definitely. Uh, on this journey. Uh, you weren't you weren't here for Dude, the beginning. Jacob, this is the most I've oh, laughed good. in a long time. So really, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> I've had a lot of fun. Mm. I do miss you, man. I'm and, uh, so excited. Oh, I'm so excited to be back. I am. Yeah, I'm ready to be home. <laughs> oh yeah. Dude, hopefully you'll uh, you'll join us again. Yeah, well, moment. probably not, but like we can we can see. <laughs> What if I pay you? I'm pretty I'm pretty cheap right now, man. <laughs> Dude, I'm telling you, I'll Venmo you thirty five cents right now. <laughs> no. All right. Another thirty five cents. What's, what's the name of this podcast? Well uh yeah, no. The name is uh Destination Unknown. This is episode four. Uh we call it Destination Unknown because honestly we, we write out some guidelines, but we never really know where we're going. Where we're gonna take For sure. that sort of thing. Okay, I, I'll have I have a send off then. Uh, um, are we ready? Is this oh, like are we are we absolutely. ready to like be done? Okay. Yeah. Let's <clears throat> do it. Yeah. Um, th- this has been destination send off. No, shoot. Dest- <laughs> this has been. Oh no. <laughs> um, th- this has been destination unknown. We don't know where we are, or what's who who's they, who who they are, or if we are. What's going on? We don't know, and we're not. <laughs> We're not going to f- find out that good night. <laughs>